गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू द स्टडीज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज़ कंटेम्प्रेरी साउथ एशिया एंड वट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इन दिस चैप्टर इज इंडिया इज़ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट कंट्री ऑफ साउथ एशिया एंड आफ्टर द न्यूक्लियर टेस्ट Uh, done by both india and pakistan this region became the focus of uh, global attention uh, actually this is uh, not a peaceful region of the world uh, because there are various kinds of uh, border disputes and uh, water dispute is also there between the countries then uh, ethic, eth- ethnic uh, uh, strife and uh, insurgency is also prevailing in this area uh, although it is uh, believed that uh, if uh, the countries of south asia uh, begin uh, begin uh, begin to cooperate with each other then in that case uh, this reason will uh, develop into um, one of the most powerful and prosper region of the world so first of, of all we will uh, discuss what do we mean by south asia uh, actually south asia is the uh, is that part of asia which is uh, surrounded by himalayas in the north indian ocean in the south arabian sea in the west and bay of bengal in the east and uh, the countries which are included in south asia are india Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, Pakistan, uh, Sri Lanka and Maldives. Here uh, what is important why uh, this region is naturally secluded from other part of the world and because of this uh, 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 because of this uh, aloofness uh, Uh, this region has uh, a distinct cultural social and linguistic properties and uh, here one more thing uh, you must know that uh, many times uh, countries like uh, afghanistan and myanmar uh, are, are also added in south asia uh, but uh, in this book only five uh, seven countries which uh, i told you earlier are included in the south asia and the countries which are beyond uh, himalayas that is china that is also n- not a part of south asia now uh, in in this chapter in this whole chapter uh, we will deal with the uh, domestic politics the internal uh, politic politics and uh, political system of uh, all these countries and uh, Uh, what is the nature of uh, conflict and cooperation among these countries so uh, in brief uh, what you uh, must know that uh, india and sri lanka are the only two countries of uh, south asia uh, which have uh, which have established democratic regime successfully and uh, these are the two two countries Uh, which remained democratic throughout uh, throughout its uh, there are many loopholes and weaknesses in the democratic rule of uh, these countries still uh, what is uh, appreciable is um, that uh, both the countries remained uh, democratic throughout its uh, existence as an independent country uh, now uh, what we see in bangladesh and pakistan that uh, in these two countries uh, democratic regime was uh, uh, never su- uh, stable and successful uh, many times uh, democratic regime uh, were toppled down by the military uh, rule uh, in pakistan after the in bangladesh after the end of cold war uh, democracy has uh, been established in a successful manner uh, and uh, in pakistan what we see that uh, 
there also after the end of cold war a uh, democratic regime was established under the leadership of benazir bhutto and uh, nawaz sharif but in year 1999 parvez musharraf uh, st- led uh, a military coup and he established his military rule there uh, though at present pakistan is also under a democratic rule and uh, uh, in nepal uh, there was a constitutional monarchy established in 1991 and then in 2005 the monarchy um, started to take over the powers of uh, legislature and uh, the democracy was uh, um, uh, weakened in that country but uh, because of uh, popular uh, rising uh, popular uprising uh, democracy was restored in um, nepal and the powers of the king was reduced um, uh, so what we see in all these countries these are the um, five major countries of uh, uh, south asia india sri lanka pakistan bangladesh and nepal and uh, uh, here we find that there is tendency towards uh, democratic regime and the two smallest countries uh, they are maldives and bhutan in those countries also uh, there is a shift towards democracy uh, in uh, um, uh, maldives uh, there was a sultanate till 1968 but after that they established a republic uh, with presidential form of government and in 2005 uh, the constitution was amended in order to start a multi party system and uh, their uh, democracy became more meaningful and uh, uh, in uh, bhutan also uh, th- there there is a monarchy but now there is also uh, it has also shifted towards multi party system so overall we uh, what we experience that in uh, almost every country of south asia there is tendency towards democracy all the countries are moving in the direction of uh, establishment of uh, true and uh, meaningful democratic regime uh, we have a uh, um, very detailed uh, data regarding this uh, and now i'm going to discuss uh, those data with you this is the first data which i am going to uh, explain with you explain you uh, you can see uh, there are uh, five countries of uh, south asia in bangladesh 69% of the people uh, uh, say that uh, democracy is preferable and in india 70% of the people say that democracy is preferable in nepal this percentage is 62% and in pakistan and sri lanka it's 37 and 71% respectively when we uh, uh, take average of uh, this data we will add 69 70 62 37 and 71 and divide it by 5 then what figure we will get is around 62% and now you see the map of uh, south asia in this map of south asia uh, uh, the red portion which is uh, which depicts the percentage of uh, people in the whole south asia who says that uh, democracy is preferable is 62% this 62% is the average of uh, all the average of all the um, countries of south asia then uh, we see in bangladesh there are 6 uh, percentage of people who says that sometimes dictatorship is better Uh, in pakistan in in india it's 9% in nepal 10 in pakistan 14 and in sri lanka it's 11% so uh, again we will uh, uh, 
take average of uh, this data and uh, the average will be 10 it is uh, depicted by yellow color in the map of south asia you can see in the map and uh, there are um, uh, 25 percent people in bangladesh who says that it doesn't matter to them and this percentage is 21 in india 29 in nepal 49 in pakistan and 18 in sri lanka and this uh, is depicted by blue color in the map and this constitute uh, uh, 28 percent of the whole population of south asia Therefore, uh, this figure says that uh, democracy is pre preferred over dictatorship everywhere except in Pakistan. Now we switch to another uh, data. In this data, uh, we see that uh, uh, how suitable is democracy for your country. Uh, overall, in the whole of South Asia, there are 88% of the people who consider that democracy is the suitable form of government for the whole region. In Bangladesh, it is 93%, in Sri Lanka, 92%, in India, 92%, in Pakistan, 84%, and in Nepal, 79%. So, in this way, we see that uh, there are uh, there is a tendency towards uh, democratic uh, rule. People consider that uh, democracy is uh, uh, suitable for their country and uh, uh, many people are also uh, who think that democracy is very suitable for their country. And uh, what we see that uh, this uh, analysis is based on the interview with more than 19,000 ordinary citizens in the five countries of South Asia. Uh, and uh, now we uh, move to another data in this data it is uh, about uh, economy what is the condition of economic development and human development uh, uh, in this uh, what we see that uh, what is the world average uh, South Asia is always behind the world average and if we consider uh, the different countries of South Asia, what we see that Sri Lanka is at the first rank because uh, you can see uh, life expectancy at birth in the year 2004, it is uh, uh, 67.3 years for the whole world and when we see in South Asia, in the context of South Asia, it's uh, 63.7 years and when we see in india it's 63.6 years and in sri lanka it's 74.3 years in this way we see that in all the um, in all the sphere sri lanka is ahead of india the second is average uh, literacy uh, adult literacy rate and this also India's rate is 61% and Sri Lanka is at 90.7%. In all the uh, aspect you can see that uh, Sri Lanka is at first position and India is at the second. And the last uh, column is about HDI rank. You have uh, read about this uh, human development index in your class 10th uh, uh, economics. Uh, human development on the basis of human development and uh, index is prepared by um, by united nation development program in this uh, human development index india is at the 126th rank in the year 2006 and sri lanka is uh, at 93rd rank so we can uh, conclude with this that uh, in uh, the economic and human development uh, matters uh, the first country in the south asia is uh, sri lanka and india stands uh, behind uh, sri lanka